Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what up? Josh Coker here, AKA Josh Miss Prime. You know what it is. Coming at you with another episode of Polymathics, the YouTube channel that helps you become a modern day Renaissance man. Or woman. Or woman. And today I have with me again, the lovely, the beautiful, Suzanne Sherwood, AKA. Auto Susie. Auto Susie, go ahead and check her out on all the different social medias. And today we are continuing our conversation about character arcs, particularly we are discussing the redemptive character arc. Character arc. And before I get into it, I didn't preface this the last video and I wanna preface it this one. As with most of the storytelling techniques that we discuss, there is the the fictional element to it, which is like if you're a fiction writer or just a story aficionado and you want to learn about story structure, there's that element. But then there's also the real life element where, you know, the whole reason that fiction is a major component of humankind is because it teaches us how to live together in a society. And I know that sounds a little woo-woo, but if you look into the research and you really dig deep into myth and fairy tales and fables and all this stuff, that's what they're there for. And that's what really helps keep the society tied together in its moral values, its moral codes, and, and allows it to evolve over time. So those are the two main perspectives to look at this information from. There's the storytelling perspective, in the real life perspective. And um, like I said in the last video, the reason why we're having this conversation is because Suze is in her master's program, right? Yes. For becoming a counselor. And she sits in these groups with people who are going through rehab and she's developing a course that has a meta myth element to it with the hero's journey. Narrative therapy. Narrative therapy. And so some of these questions came up and I thought, one, these are really good questions for my viewers because um, they're story related. And two, just in terms of how they would apply to people trying to reach their full potential, they have a great deal of um, potential to help. So, so without further ado, what are your questions about the redemptive arc. So, listen. My original questions were how is it different than the tragic arc? And um, again, some examples. Yeah, examples will usually be in the end. Okay. And um, those were the big questions, but I wanted to hear about it because a lot of people think that they're just a bad guy and that there's no hope for them because they've done so much wrong in the past. Right. That they are like, I can never come back from that. And there are, I just, I don't feel that there are very many heroes that for the majority of the movie are rough. That they're kind of villainous. So, right. um, I wanted to hear about that and how that and plays that out. That actually, you're right, it, it does. It, it gives hope to people who maybe have screwed up a little bit, maybe didn't make wise decisions earlier in their life for whatever reason. Because those characters are relatable to someone who feels like they're a bad guy. Right, and this is actually something that um, I thought about in the last video but I didn't mention. And it's not, it's not necessarily about being a bad guy per se, but it's, it's along the same vein and it definitely plays into the, the, the storytelling aspect and what happens in real life is um, a lot of times the flaw that the hero or a character starts out with, it originated from early on in their childhood. It's a psychological flaw for whatever re it was there. It was created for as a coping mechanism, wh whatever the case is. And um, one of the things that I see a lot in real life, but it also plays out in, in like these, uh, I'm a bad guy, I'm a villain, that's all, that's the only way I can be uh, type of characters is um, P 
people grow up and they were told by their parents, you're the smart kid, or we're poor, or rich people are evil, or, um, I don't know, people who exercise are vain, or, you know, these are things that if a kid latches onto that, or you're the cute one, or, or something like that, like, yeah. like, when a kid latches onto that from a young age, and they use that as part of, the, to identify as their persona, then the, the issue is it, it's a limiting belief that, that prevents them from reaching their full potential. And um, that's very key when we're talking about redemptive story arcs and tragic uh, story arcs. By the way, if you didn't see the video on tragic story arcs, you might want to catch that first just because we laid some of the groundwork for this video in particular. But, you know, do whatever the fuck you want to do. Listen, I don't care. Whatever you want to do. Um, okay, so normally you're going to have two basic kinds of redemption arcs. You're going to have uh, a villain who's always been a villain, and then they redeem themselves. So it's it it's it's um well I'll get to that. The villain who redeems themselves, or you have a hero who fell into a tragic arc, probably became a villain and then they redeem themselves. I personally think, personally, that a true redemption arc is the latter. Right. Is someone who was a hero, they fucked up, and then they redeem themselves. Right. And that's more true to life, too. Right. Because you don't come in, people's story doesn't start in the middle, where they're already established as a villain. Right. Now, a villain, in my opinion, a villain who is redemptive is really they just had a positive character arc. So they they achieved they they um, achieved a psychological enlightenment that they now see that their actions are preventing them from reaching their fullest potential or um, preventing society from functionally functioning the most efficient way possible. Okay, so with that being said, that kind of like ties in. Okay, there. Are, this is something else I didn't mention in the last video. There are three main character arcs, and there's a there's a really good book on this. I'll try to leave the link down below or something. I, I read it uh, uh, like two or three years ago, but there's three main character arcs that you see in almost all fiction. There is a positive character arc, and this is where the, the, the hero or the character, they're kind of going like this. They might even be going a little bit downward, but not, not like nosedive downward, just a little bit. And it's because that fatal flaw or that, that flawed uh, psychological uh, dogma is, is causing them to it's preventing them from reaching their fullest potential. And then what a, a positive character arc is, they're introduced to a psychological truth or center that is going to allow them to overcome their flaw and then reach their fullest potential. And then this is what happens. So they're going down and then they go up. And then they're able to continue to reach their fullest potential until they hit some other speed bump. Like there's never, it's a never ending thing with your characters, with real life. Once you overcome one flaw that you have, then something else will come up. And um, usually the thing that you want to go after next. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Or you don't want to go after next. And, and actually I'll give you a really good example from real life that could play out in a story and probably has. But like uh, uh, the other, the, in the last video, I said, okay, a tragic hero might be someone who had a heart attack. The doctor said, hey, you need to change your eating habits. You need to exercise. And then they didn't. And then they had another heart attack and they died or they became paralyzed or something like that, right? That's tragic. Let's take it the flip side. A positive character arc on that is that they listen to the doctor. They get super fit. They eat super healthy. But then the next thing is they could go too far in that direction 
And then now they're imposing it on their friends. They're imposing it on their family. And that healthy lifestyle is now impeding their personal relationships. And so boom, they just hit another roadblock that is preventing them from reaching their fullest potential in the relationship realm. So or it's they work again, out too hard and break something. Right. And then they're back. Exactly. Right. They, they work out too hard. And then exactly. So, you know, just as in life, your heroes will constantly have new uh, flaws that they have to overcome. And that's a story that that's a whole nother video to discuss. So that's a positive character arc. A negative character arc is the opposite. You have someone who's going, uh, who's going about even, maybe even going positive, but then they're introduced to the truth that's going to help them out, um, or that could help society out. And rather than latching on to that truth, that psychological truth, and using it, they they act out in a flawed mindset. And then it ends in tragedy. That's a tragic arc, essentially. And the the more that they deny the truth and the more they embrace the flaw, the more tragic it will be. And in, in the other video, like I basically said, all of Shakespeare's plays, if you look at that, like that's how trage tragic endings happen. Uh, Darth Vader, a lot of times the hero will there's, there's two main things. The hero will either die, and not a, not like a good, glorious death, like just die um, in a shameful way, in a in a like a like you feel like you've been gypped way, like like with Romeo and Juliet, where you're like they were so close, but then they they didn't get it. Um, or they won't die, but everything that they loved gets taken away from them because they. It's like a it's like a cautionary tale, and that's like Darth Vader. So, um, that's negative. And then there's this one called flat. Now, flat is different from a static arc. A static arc is like someone who doesn't change; they don't affect the world. That that's like a side character. A flat arc is someone who is a main character, usually a hero or a villain, could be a mentor, that does not change. And so you might say, well, and how does that affect the story? A character with a flat arc is they've already learned their lesson and it's society that and the people around them that has to be changed. And so that character introduces the lesson to society and therefore either allows it to have a positive or negative change. And um, I think that a good example of this is actually Thor Ragnarok. Because Thor is his act by that point, he's actually learned his lesson. He's he's he knows like what it means to be king and all this other stuff. And it's the person who we see a positive arc from is actually Dirge. But he doesn't get that way until he's been affected by what Thor did to come back to rescue Asgard. And then actually Dirge, a good example of a redemptive hero. Someone who was on the good guy's team, went to the bad guy's team, he helped out Hela, he's kinda like, you know, anti-heroish. But in the end, he redeemed himself by sacrificing himself to save Asgard. So, it's a, a good example. Um, the, the best example, before we go here, the best example uh, from recent fiction would be Darth Vader. That's one that like pretty much everybody knows. Everybody's familiar with. Old school and new school people get that. And, you know, the reason why I really like him is because we get to see him from, uh, as a boy, becoming a Jedi, becoming a hero, then going, having a fall, a tragic fall, and then eventually rising up to save his son and society as a whole from tyranny and that's um that's a really to me it's a very holistic redemptive arc and then um we've you and i have talked about this before but to a lesser extent thor and oaken shield because um he does give in to his fatal flaw which is like 
the lust of power, greed, the dragon's disease that Smaug talks about. Um, it, it totally changes who he was in the beginning, someone who would cared about his people who was who was doing everything to help his people to oh yeah we're just gonna all kill ourselves in this or or we're gonna let all of our allies kill themselves in the battle of the five armies while we hang out in the cave here um the way he redeems himself though is finally when he's been convinced to go out and fight he goes after the pale orc uh azog and Azog represents Azog is essentially Moby Dick. He's he's the he, just like you have the white whale, he's the pale orc. And the the paleness and the whiteness of a uh, shadow archetype is it's symbolic of death. And the reason why Moby Dick and Azog are are pale and white is to represent like this is this is the direct path to death which is what we see happen to um what's his name captain ahab he goes after moby dick he continues down his dark path of of wanting revenge of wanting vengeance and he ends up dying a tragic death but where where it's different with thorin is he goes and he faces azog not out of not out of vengeance, not out of hate, because he, he actually fears Azog. He goes to, to protect his people and to, to protect his kingdom. And that is the heroic duty. And um, it ultimately, it requires him to sacrifice himself. And I think, I think that's really where the brilliance of that scene and that character and that redemption arc happens. Is Azog doesn't die when he falls into the water and drowns. He dies when Thorin allows himself to be stuck with the knife so that he can lay the fatal final blow to Azog. And what that symbolizes is the death of the old self, the death of the Thorin that was selfish, that was only thinking of what he wanted in his kingdom and his power, and the, the rebirth in the sense that I'm willing to sacrifice for the greater good. That is the revitalization of society, the hero's the hero's duty, so to speak. So, any questions? Anything else? I feel like we kind of rushed this one, but we can always do more. Um, we we gotta take care of some business here. So, any yeah, final I think thoughts? We should talk about in a future video about sacrifice and how that's not that's not you taking yourself out of the picture. In right. fact, that could that could actually be a problem if you remove yourself. From taking yourself out of the journey altogether. Right. And that's not a sacrifice. And that's it doesn't seem like it, but that's actually not. a very good point is that um, in fiction characters are symbolic of the ego. Even the side characters are symbolic of like emotion and logic. And so a hero is symbolic of a part of the ego, but not the whole. And so Thorin sacrificing himself, we'll discuss this in depth in a different video, but that is that's speaking to um, when the ego or the person in real life sacrifices that part of themselves that was preventing them from reaching their fullest potential. And, um, and we'll leave it at that so that we can take care of some business. But um, hopefully that's been helpful. Hopefully that sheds some insight into this whole redemptive arc. I'm sure we'll have more conversations. But for now, there it is. So once again, this has been Josh Coker, a.k.a. Josh Miss Prime, and Suzanne Sherwood, a.k.a. <laughs> AKA Auto Susie. And uh, we're coming at you from Polymathics, the, the channel that helps you become a modern day renaissance man. Or woman. And until next time, take it easy.